Okay, good afternoon. I am Quentin. I am part of the COVID Zappers team and this is the five minute video that for our presentation. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the device to you. Um, so first off, just let me explain what the device actually is. Um, COVID-19, as we all know, has ruined a lot of lives. Um, it's killed a lot of people. It's made a lot of people sick. It's changed everything. Uh, we've been told that, you know, masks are going to help and it's been shown that they do help. Uh, vaccines are out now and those certainly do help. However, there has been some pushback against all of the above. Uh, some people don't want to get vaccines, some people can't get vaccines, some people don't want to wear masks, some people actually can't wear masks. And then you have people who are just abiding by all the rules anyways. So the idea of the project was to come up with a, a, a different I, different problem solver, essentially, uh, in COVID-19 pandemic being the actual problem. Uh, this device aims to assist in preventing further infections, and it is an electronic device. Uh, it incorporates a, a sensor and some UV light. Um, it was 3D printed by our mechanical student, Eric. Um, the Arduino is programmed by myself, and we assembled the whole thing together uh, with Ben and got the device to work. Um, so he, this is what the video is today. I'm going to be presenting this thing to you. I have the batteries right here. I have not plugged everything in, but we'll go through a little bit of background first. Essentially, the device is going to be or is designed to be aimed into an air vent like this one right here above my head with the register taken off. Um, the idea is that the device will be able to lodge itself up into the air vent with the battery pack hanging out on the outside uh, so that it can be recharged if needed. And the device will just hang up in there without impeding airflow too much uh, and hopefully sterilizing air as it comes out. The general idea is that with the constant influx of new clean air into the environment. Sorry, let me fix this phone real quick. The constant influx of new clean air into an enclosed area will provide a means of having a clean, viable volume of air. Um, it's, it's the same as opening a window instead of, but instead of allowing dust and pollen and other organisms, insects to come in through this open window, our open window is going to be our air vents. But this time we are guaranteeing that the air that's coming out of the air vents is absolutely clean. Uh, this is because airborne or COVID-19 is transmitted by the air primarily. Um, our breath, our coughs, our talking, yelling. Basically anytime we open our mouth, we might be spreading COVID if you don't have a vaccine. So uh, without further ado, let us demonstrate this device for you. Um, so right here is the 3D printed device. Um, it's got spring-loaded legs on there so it can lodge itself up there. It's got uh, the prototype UVs right here. Um, this is the gooseneck. This will allow you to sort of aim it up into the vent. Um, and then we have our battery pack, which will be attached to the outside via this little hole right here. So you can see no batteries in there now. Here's the battery connects coming out this side. They are going into via this DC power cord, powering the Arduino right through that hole right there. So the Arduino is sitting right inside here. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna try and get this device to work on the first try. Um, Make sure positive and negative line up. All right, let's bring this over. So, for the purposes of testing, um, you know, I had to use my breath. Uh, for this particular design module, uh, unfortunately, the leg was short by like an inch or so. That's not an issue. We can actually just change that out. It's just the wrong one is inserted in this one right now. So it, it can go up into the air vent and it does get triggered by airflow as you have seen in the demonstration videos where I had a fan on right next to it. Uh, so it's triggered by my breath. 
essentially, so it could be triggered by the air flowing out of the vent. Uh, the one issue with this prototype is that these LEDs right here are in this prototype board with the LEDs on it. It, it was soldered by myself at home, and, and these LEDs are not rated to kill anything, basically. Um, these are not even really fully UV lights. Um, that would go on the final prototype design. I'm going to unplug this battery real quick. Make sure it's all out for safety. Um, right here is the PCB board that I designed. Um, so each of these is 15 uh, LEDs that are actually rated to output the power needed to kill anything. Um, so basically we made a rough calculation as to how long it would take for a particle to travel basically one meter uh, because that's what we guessed how much how much the light would go up into the vent that's probably the maximal distance it's effective how how fast or how long does it take for a particle to travel through that one meter and out into the vent well from research it has been shown that the COVID-19 viral particle only needs three millijoules of energy UV energy applied to it to disrupt its DNA, essentially cross-link its DNA in some crucial part. We can't pick where we cross-link it, but we can certainly cross-link the DNA. That's what UV is good for. UV is good for catalyzing reactions. And in this particular case, it's catalyzing the cross-link between two DNA molecules near each other inside the viral particle. Now, this right here is the control module of you see right here would be the connection for the airflow sensor, which is actually sitting right here in the Arduino. Um, you know, because these lights on this LEDs, you know, each of these little squares it, with an LED is going to cost $27 a piece. Uh, and it might go down with more you order, but $27 a piece is how much I bought my single one for. So 27 times 15. A lot of money for a prototype, so we did not complete this prototype because the Arduino and the and the prototype board essentially proves the concept can be done. However, this these LEDs will take a lot more current and take a lot more power, and you're gonna have to charge the batteries again a lot more times. However, the device only turns on when the air is on. Now, the airflow sensor is a thermal pile. Uh, it is the one sensor on the device. In the future, I would like to implement more. Um, there was an air quality sensor implemented before, but for ease, and the group thought that it would be better just to have the airflow sensor. Um, but I, in the future, I would like to implement some communication systems, uh, air quality sensors, uh, temperature sensors, and of course, on top of the airflow sensor. And because that is using the AT2560AU microcontroller, there should be plenty of room on the chip and memory-wise to be able to handle this situation. Um, so the way it actually allows the ton of current to go through, because it's going to take uh, more than a couple hundred milliamps. Uh, simulation showed that each one of these LEDs can take up to about 300 milliamps. So as you can see, we're going to be supplying a lot of current in here and all of that is to be able to zap the coronavirus within that one meter estimation of it flying through the air vent. Uh, other organisms probably won't be affected however future testing might prove us wrong. Uh, for this particular project unfortunately we don't have uh, a means of testing it on biological material uh, but that would be something we do in the future for sure. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration video. Um, and if you have any questions, please email me. Um, and I will talk to you later.